Okay, every Wednesday night, we meet at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. That's West Coast, California. Tonight, we have Charles Howard on here. He is very astute, educated, and an intellectual guy. He's built this platform. He's taken what's in his brain, and he's broke it down and made it real simple if you are a barber, stylist in the beauty profession, if you're a school owner, if you are an instructor, if you are a future school owner, you definitely want to tune in tonight and listen to what Charles has created. So I'm not going to talk a lot. He's been in this industry a long time. We, we have a lot of seasoned veterans in here tonight, but without further ado, I'm bringing to y'all Charles Howard. Now, Charles, before we get into what you have invented and created, okay. give them your backstory a little bit from childhood, second way, second way all the way up through school, and how you got in this beauty profession. You know what? I have um, what am I, you know what? And it's it's interesting that you say that because I have been in this industry for 20 years. Now, sometimes, you know, you look at it and you're like, where did the time go? Because that's exactly what I was thinking uh, many years ago when it was at five years and then it was at 10 years and now I'm at 20 years. I've been actually barbering since 2002. So I've uh, started here in Dallas. I'm working a job at Enterprise Rent-A-Car and I'm unhappy. And, and back then I had a drawer that had a phone book in it. So I'm not sure if anybody knows what a phone book is, but I'm fishing through the phone book. And I said, you know what? And I said, do barbers go to school? <laughs> and so I go through the phone book. And when I go through the phone book, all of a sudden I see barber schools. And I was like, what? Needless to say, when I get to barber school, to this school here in Dallas, um, all of a sudden I'm like, I walk in and I smell clipper oil and an oil sheen in the air. <laughs> it was an old school. But when I tell you that it was absolutely awesome. And I knew when I walked into that barber school that this is where I'm supposed to be. Now, also, you know, the instructor, she told me, she says, you're going to spend about $5,000. No, no, sorry, not $5,000, $500 on some tools because I had to buy my own tools at the time. Mm-mm. I'm going to the Asian man and I'm going to be cheap. Needless to say, brother, I, I, I looked at all my receipts and I had spent $500, just like she said. So I have been in this industry and have absolutely loved it. I have met some absolutely great people and I've had a clientele now that, you know, I don't even have to necessarily advertise because, you know, all of my clients have been around for such a long time. So it is great, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I'm a creator, okay? So we, we understand that. Let's go from the get-go. I'm a creator. So I have been um, figuring out what next to create. I've done men's hair. I've done women's hair. And now it's what's next for you, Charles? And so I have decided to go about the school route, but go about it a little differently. Um, I don't know necessarily... Um, sometimes I'm running into uh, schools that are wanting to get the students in and get them out. And so what I wanted to do was create a product that will help the school owners. I think you, you and I had uh, talked about this the other day on Saturday. And that is, is that the product that I've created, I went on ahead and looked at how some of the school owners are working. A lot of times with us, and, and you know this as well, that being entrepreneurs, you're out here in a world by yourself, you know, and in, in a, as a school owner, you're also out here by yourself as well. So you don't have anybody to rely on. Sometimes, let's just say that sometimes you don't have anybody to rely on and it's nobody out there but you. So I created a product that will allow me to come in and to assist you, the school owner. I would love to be able to partner with other schools and just like have a group uh, of us partnering together so that they have support. But until that happens, this is what I have to offer. So I 
I have. Do you, wait, well, first of all, let me ask you this. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> okay. when, when you graduated from barber school, what did you do? So um, I worked at a company uh, called AT&T. And at that time, they offered me, as soon as I got my licensing, um, they offered me a job. And I had been already going to school part-time uh, for two years. And so the first thing that they ask is, you know, do you want this position? And, and it was a good job, good money and everything. But one of the things that I told them was that, no, I'm going to decline on this because I didn't go to barber school for two years uh, to not do this. And when you're working hard on your goals and trying to achieve things, you know, it's, it's opportunities that will come your way. But I had to stay focused because it had been, you know, like, for example, my barber school wasn't in a particular area that I hang out in, you know what I mean? So, you know, it was a lot of sacrificing that I did to get that education, then to get that license. And, and I'll tell you a quick story too. Okay, so my, my barber school instructor said that if you want to learn how to cut straight hair, that you should go to Supercuts. So I went to Supercuts and I went to Supercuts just as the front desk guy. So I'm like, you know what, let's just work the front desk. So I'm signing people on so they can get their haircuts in the back. And then I'm also selling products when they come to the front. But when it came to, and I'll tell you, when it came to my licensing, my Supercuts instructor, well, we had a Supercuts training on in November. So what I did was I signed myself up for the training. And my district manager, she says, uh, Charles, she says, how do you know that you're going to be able to start the training at that time? She says, you know, you, you, don't, you don't even have your license and you're getting ready to go to state board. You may fail. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I told her, I said, that training class starts on this day. And it was in November. I said, it starts on this day. And I will be there on that day. Needless to say, here at that time, back in 2002, we had to drive our, um, ourselves, our model, and everybody packed up. And we had to just go there and be ready to roll. So um, needless to say, I went on ahead and I passed that first time. Mm -mm, it's not going back. And I started at Supercuts after that. So I've been uh, working for different, different chains that allow me to, uh, the chains allow me to basically um, talk with the students and understand, hey, you know what, if you did this, you can learn that. If you do this, you can do that. So it has been great. I, I've, I've loved it. Okay. I have loved it. So did did you leave Supercuts eventually or what? You know what? Now, you, you know what? And, and so I think it's interesting you say that because Supercuts was paying me at the time $7 an hour. <laughs> and and <laughs> I couldn't, you know what? And, and I think that we get so used to a check, you know, because again, when we're born and stuff, we're, we're told, you know what? You need to get a job. You need to get a job. And I have been out here you know, thinking that I need to hold on to this check. And literally this check was maybe like anywhere from 50 to a hundred dollars. And I'm holding on to this check. And one time this guy that I was working with at the barbershop, he says, you know, Charles, he says, if you put that amount of time that you're putting into supercuts over here at the barbershop, he says, you'll probably make more money. And, you know, I'm such a driven guy. I started to chart so I created a, a whole Excel spreadsheet each month, and I knew exactly how much I made in the whole year. And that's what I did. And I was able to chart my progress and stuff and just to see how much money I was starting to make. And eventually um, it did, it outweighed supercuts a whole lot. And then I just went on ahead and just did it. I'm like, you didn't do this for no reason. You know, you didn't go out and spend this time two years trying to get this license. You didn't decline, you know, AT&T at the time, you know, so for, for you to just, you know, be held to a check. So I just did it. I stepped out there and did it. Now, I don't know about, you know, everybody's religion and stuff, but sometimes you got to, you know, you got to say a little prayer <laughs> and, then you gotta, and then you have to just believe in yourself. And, you know, and a lot of times too, I think that, you know, when you are out here, you know, a lot of times, especially like I was raised in the church. 
So, you know, it's just like, you know, believe in God, you know, God's got you, trust in God, you know. So that's what I had to do. I had to go on ahead and do it, brother. I was like, you know what? If nobody else got me, I know God does, you know? And so that's what I did. And I've been pretty successful since then. You was making $7 an hour, right? $7 an hour, concerned about that check. Okay. <laughs> How much was a haircut at the barbershop? You know what? At the, uh, okay, so the barbershop, I think the haircuts were $15. So it was fifteen dollars. Yeah. And so you could cut a head of hair. And how long would it take you to cut a head of hair? Now, now look. Now I was out of barber school at that time. So you know everything is longer at barber school. So look, maybe for me to do a ball fade, it was like an hour. <laughs> okay. But you know, you know, as you do it over and over and over, you get better. Okay, you get a lot better. But yeah, so, I mean, and it was probably about 30 minutes or so because, you know, especially working in a barbershop, you have a lot of people coming in. So you're trying to, you know, go as fast as you can. So it was probably. That? So you quit Supercuts and transitioned to the barbershop. Yep, I sure did. Why is it that a lot of times when we're transitioning from God is taking us from one level to another level, a lot of times we're scared. I want, to, I want to say to, to that, why is it that we're scared? Some people. The well, majority. Let's, let's just say that, that, that some people. And a lot of times I think that people are afraid of change. You know what I mean? And it's, it's about comfort. You know, I've been, uh, you know, I was, I was comfortable at receiving a check. You know, I'd worked at some very, very, very large companies, you know, in my past. And because I've worked at those companies, um, you know, I've, I've had some large amount of checks and stuff coming in. And, you know, it, it's like, you know, I've never really had to, at that time, I never really had to depend on me, if that makes any sense, you know, because I, I always had the company for the insurance, for the health insurance, you know, for the dental insurance. I've, I've had the company for the 401k, you know, you know, I, I've had the company you know, for their support, you know, if I needed anything else, you know, I've had the team of people there at the uh, company as well, who was able to help me, you know, now I have to create all of that myself, you know, and I, and I think too, that at that time, I didn't have um, the support, you know, so I didn't know that there was other people out there that, you know, could help me out. So I had a barber that I became friends with, and we're still friends to this day, um, you know, I had him to talk to, you know, to kind of help and, and guide and stuff. And then as you go along year after year, you meet other barbers and other people out there. So, you know, I, I think a lot of it could be then the support, the, the fear. Let's just say that, you know, you, you sometimes I think that fear is also transferred from, you know, family, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you, you need to get a check. You need to get a check, you know. So it, it, it is a lot of your support. So you had some family members telling you to keep that job. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Correct. So now you're working in a barbershop, you're getting clients. How did that go? So you know what? Now I'm going to tell you this. Now I'm a lively guy. Okay. So it was never a dull moment. Now I'm not. Now I want to tell you this. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. On Saturdays, I would, okay, so let's say, I would clown on Saturdays because I knew a lot of people was coming on Saturdays. So on Friday, I would buy a new shirt just for Saturday. <laughs> so I'm out because I'm ready. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> one of the barbers used to come in at six o'clock in the morning and I was getting in at seven and eight o'clock. And I was like, uh, he's already cut heads. You know, so brother, when I tell you I was dressed and ready at 6 a.m., I was getting up at 5 a.m., getting up there to that barbershop, getting ready by 6 to cut my first head. And sometimes I was just sitting there, but until I got busy and stuff, you know, I didn't care. I looked good. I had my new shirt on. <laughs> okay, so you was at that barbershop. Did you transition to another shop or what did you do? Okay, now, now I'm going to tell you this. Now, I left that barbershop after two years in, in the business, and I didn't have a strong clientele. And I went to, I actually stepped out. I was told in the past that you have to be around what it is that you're trying to learn, right? And so 
I was trying to, I, I had a mannequin head and I had a mannequin stand at my station in the barber shop. So what I did was I went back to the barber book and to learn women's hair because I knew it was in there, you know, that this big old big book. So I went back to the book and I was learning how to do women's hair, learning how to do women's hair. And eventually I got to a point where I was like, you know, after two years, I'm like, Charles, you've got to step out there and you got to, you got to take a chance. So I went to a salon suite where women were. And I made friends with some of the women there. And I was able to sit in there, in their shops and watch them do hair. You know, cause I wasn't, <clears throat> at that time I wasn't going back to be a cosmetologist. Cause at that time it was like 1500 hours. I had already spent 1500 hours at that time to get a, my barber license. So I wasn't gonna do that to become a cosmetologist, but I could look in that book and then go and watch other women doing women's hair. And I always had a problem with that little swoop. <laughs> I was like, ooh, you know, I could never get my curl, my, uh, my flat iron to curl and swoop like that. And I wish you could see me because there was the times I would be walking way in the back. Look, I had the hair going and I was standing way back there trying to get it to swoop. I could never get it, but I got it now. <laughs> Let me tell you. But yeah, so that's what I did. Okay, so you learned how to do women's hair. I did. I did. I stepped out after two years, went to a salon suite, and got it done, brother. Got it done. Okay. Got it done. Now, I will say this, too, that it was too early. And, you know, when you go to a salon suite, the people that walk in there are looking for someone in particular. So I didn't, I didn't have a strong enough base. And so because of that, I had to go to work in corporate America and, you know, some, some good things happened and some bad things happened during that, because while I was working, uh, the people were showing my suite, like I was never going to come back, you know, and I, I was just working in the daytime and then I was cutting hair at night. And so the salon owners actually basically just re-rented my room. And I was like, oh my God, you know, so I had to figure out some other stuff then, another place to go. So, I mean, you, you have your good and your bad, but I lost, I lost, you know, quite a bit of money working in a salon suite, but I also learned a lot from it. And I think that each experience that you go through is something to learn from it. Okay. And then what, what was next after that? Take, take oh. us on this journey. So after after I after I left the salon suite, then um, I get a call. And so I, I had a barber friend, and I get a call from this barber friend, and he says, "Hey, look," he said, "Man, you got to get to this barber school. You got to get to this barber school because they need teachers. They need teachers." <laughs> and so I was like, "Now I had just thought about it, and I was like, you know, this is like in 2011." And I was like, well, you know what? I think that I could probably, you know, go to a barber school. Whenever you're starting over, it's a sacrifice. So, you know, I, I thought about it and stuff and I went to go and visit the school. And now everybody knows, my friends and stuff know that Charles is a talker, he's a speaker. So I get there and his instructor is there and she's teaching a class. <clears throat> and she says, uh, Mr. Howard, she says, would you like to speak to the class? And so my first thought is, uh, are you trying to catch me off guard? Because you are not, you know, so I get there in front of these people and stuff. And it's like the 20 to 30 uh, students in this class. So I'm pumped. And I'm like, hey, everybody. I said, I'm Charles Howard. You know, I'm a barber here in Dallas, you know, this, that, and the other. I introduced myself. <laughs> I wish you could have seen her face. <laughs> she was like, oh, my God. And I think that this, I, I've always believed this, that you can see certain things, you can hear certain things. So like um, barbers can see other barbers through their haircuts and stuff, you know, ooh, and that's gonna be a good barber right there. You know, um, a teachers can see other teachers and this is what she saw in me. And she pulls me aside and she was like, hey, you know, Mr. Howard, is this something that you wanna do? Cause I can get you in. And sure enough, I was like, yes, let's do it. It was quite the sacrifice because again, you know, now I've got to decrease, you know, my hours cutting hair and stuff. And now you're teaching and, you know, trying to cut hair, 
you know, you're trying to juggle these schedules and stuff, but it worked out. Now, I will say this. It took me six tries. Brother, when I tell you it took me six tries to get that uh, instructor license, I was for sure. Now, look, I was for sure that I was supposed to get it only on that first try. I kept missing it by one or two points. And I just got to a point where I was just like, I was done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing it. This is this is about the fifth try. I was like, I'm done. So I took a whole year. But my instructor, she was like, well, Mr. Howard, <laughs> she was an older woman. And she says, Mr. Howard, she says, when are you, when are you going to get your license? And I said, oh, I'm going. I, I'm going to go one day. But I tell you what, I didn't have a plan. So what I did was I put a plan in place. I recorded myself reading the hardest part. I know it was chapter nine in the, in the Master Educator book. And I, I read that and recorded myself. So when I was working out, I was listening to me talking or speaking that chapter. So I'm going through whatever I was doing, whenever in between clients and stuff, I was listening to me. I set up, then she's, she's approaching me again. And she says, Mr. Howard, when are you going to schedule your test? And so I told her, I said, well, hey, you know what? I'm going to schedule it on this day. And I scheduled it. The only thing that I didn't do was do a practice test because I had listened to the information over and over, read it in the textbook, but I never tested myself. And it wasn't until I was sitting right there in front of the machine where uh, I was like, oh my God, I didn't test myself. So I go through and I do the I do the test and I'm floating through the questions and stuff, floating through them because everybody learns differently. But when the test ended, now keep in mind, I had already tested five times, you know. So I'm like, look, this sixth time, if I don't pass, brother, I'm wrecking some stuff. I'm getting ready to be the Hulk. Okay. I'm getting ready to turn green. I'm getting ready to destroy some stuff. <laughs> right. So I, I hit the button and it says fail. And I said, oh my God, I fell again. So I could see my arms <laughs> and my face, half of my face. But what I had noticed, what I had noticed was that it said pass or fail. And eventually I looked down at the bottom and I could see that it said pass. So I had already turned half green, right? So I had to go on ahead and get back to my original color because I was like, oh my God. But on the sixth time, and that's what, what you know, I would tell people is to don't give up because it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? Because you're still going to be a great instructor, whether you pass it the first time, the third time, or the sixth time. Let me tell you. Because it took, it took me six tries, <laughs> but I did it. I did it. And so then after what, after that, then I went and I taught at a barber school. I was told that, um, you know, I should teach at a barber school and went on ahead and did it. I taught at a barber school and I had so much fun. Um, I had never really... You know, I, I think that sometimes we have a, a quote unquote, a little power, you know, it's, it's our motivation that transfers over to our students, whether I had some barber school uh, and some student instructors that were there. I also had, dude, I had, I had never in my life had I ever taught nails, but we had a barber nail tech. <laughs> so <laughs> she and I both learning nails. I'm like, what? Eponychium? What in the world? What is that? You know, some of these names, the pictures of the nails and stuff was grossing me out, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold it together while I'm teaching. So I'm like, um, yeah, okay. Then this picture right here. So it was, it was quite, it was quite interesting, but I love teaching barber school. It was really, really good. <laughs> now, how did you and I meet Howard? Okay. So <clears throat> I was on Instagram. And then you and I, um, I think I sent you a, a DM on Instagram and I, be, I became part of the uh, mentoring program. One of the things that I had been researching was that, you know, a lot of us need mentors. 
you know, and for me to get to another level, I was like, you know what, I need to be, I need to have a mentor. <clears throat> I listened to a lot of uh, millionaire stuff because I, I figure that, you know, eventually one day I'm going to be a millionaire. I already know it. I feel it in my spirit, but you know, I got to take the necessary steps to do it. So um, I created my school. And when I did, I reached out to you and, uh, you know, I just gave you you know, my pitch per se. And once I did that, you know, you listened and then you were like, you know what? I, and this is what you told me. You said, you know what? You about to be a millionaire. <laughs> and I was like, what? That's the goal, you know? But, you know, I, I have, you know, sometimes I think that people say things to you and it keeps you going, it keeps you motivated. And so when you and I had that conversation back then, um, I've been in pursuit. You know, and I, I, there are times that I've almost given up on my school, but, uh, you know, something keeps me going. I know it can do it. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. And I've been pursuing YouTube. You know, I'm like, you know what, if I don't have any students, then what I'll do is I'll go on ahead and I'll just teach on YouTube. You know, I researched and figured out that I had like 500 followers on YouTube. And I was like, there's your people, there's your market right there. And <clears throat> I changed my page to the school. And once I changed the page, I like right now, I think to date, I have like 807 followers or subscribers on YouTube. You know, the goal is to get to a thousand and then after a thousand, get to 100,000. <laughs> now, you have a very unique product and system and there's something that every barber stylist beauty professional school owner instructor is, is something that they need because see you have a solution to a big problem a painful problem so when when you and i talk i knew that because first of all we have to identify a problem a painful problem right and if you have the solution to that, and if you can give that to them and present that to them, and you had it digital, online, and it was very good, because see, you're very detailed. Your videos, when you first showed me what you were doing, and mm -hmm. I looked at that, it was very professional, very detailed. I mean, it was just out of sight. I mean, you put a lot of work into that. So... Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to tell us about that when you were creating that and, and how it even came in your mind to even create that. You know what? And I, I, I tell you what, again, because I'm a, a creative guy, I don't, I don't even know how did that, that come about? You know, I, that's a really good question because I don't know how it came about, but I think that sometimes things just come up in your lap. Um, again, I, I was, looking at other people creating different classes and stuff on YouTube. So I decided that I was going to create a class as well. I had become very, very good at PowerPoint. So I decided to create classes on, on YouTube. Now, earlier I had mentioned that I had read, I had read a chapter in the Master Educator book for myself. So I was like, well, Charles, what if you were able to create something that barber school students were able to, you know, purchase and, you know, learn from? My biggest thing when it comes to education and anything that I do is I want people to learn from it. I don't, I don't want you to be wondering, well, you know what, what is he trying to do? You know, why would he do that? You know, I want you to know that everything that's out there that's created by my school should, <clears throat> should, you should learn from. So I went on, and I know somebody just mentioned too, that like, what is it on YouTube? On YouTube is Howard Brown Online Barber College. And when I created it, you know, the whole idea is for barbers to have education because I didn't, I didn't have that when I was in barber school. I didn't, I didn't have these opportunities that these barbers and stuff now have. So I created it. I sat back, brother, when I tell you sacrifice, 
I, like I go to the gym at five o'clock in the morning, you know, not when Welcome I'm Welcome to Howard Brown online. Keep going, Howard. Okay. When I'm, when I am, when I'm out here uh, creating, um, I, you know, cut that gym time down, you know. Yep. That's me right there. Howard Brown, online barber college. Okay. So you can keep on going because I'm, yeah but that's right okay but that's what that's what i do i went on ahead and i created howard brown online barber college <coughs> excuse me when i created it again i only had 500 subscribers and so now i'm up to 800 and what i wanted to do was i wanted to saturate the market out there with barber education so everything that i do um, everything how i speak online is exactly what you, you, the student, would see and read in the textbook. So I went, went through, like for example, and I teach on the basics of chemistry. I go through, look into the chapter there, and then I create a little mini class. And th these mini classes just keep your attention just a little bit. So it's about anywhere from three to five minutes. I want to definitely, you know, keep them keep you learning each time that the video comes on you should be learning from it so then there's infection control principles and practices that's live so what i did there was i decided to go on ahead and i've been teaching uh virtually at a school so when i was teaching virtually at this school i went on ahead and decided to put that out there so that way people are able to see what i've created and i'm going to say this that um, I've, I've created, I have a life coach, right? So, um, I, with my life coach, we've created goals. And one of the things that I've noticed is, is that I've been reaching a lot of my goals, a lot of my goals. And when I completed in this and put this out here, infection control principles and practices, the live class, um, you know, one of one of the things that my brother looked, he was trying to make me break down, but I was so excited to see that people were utilizing the content that I created. I've been working on this since 2019. And I, I, hell, I went to Africa, Johannesburg, Africa, and was there a week uh, stranded in my apartment because it was raining for a whole week before I decided to fly to beautiful Cape Town. But I sat there and I worked all on this content. So I'm going and I'm, I'm working on my PowerPoints and stuff and getting everything together from the book to the PowerPoint, from the book to the PowerPoint. And for me to see, for me to see people learning from the content that I created is amazing. And, you know, I am so thankful, so appreciative. Um, one of the schools that I work with and stuff, I love everybody there, you know, and I do get feedback and stuff as well, you know, how, how was this, you know, when you see this on the screen, when you see that on the screen, and I will say this too, <laughs> that I, 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 I was, you know, and I've created these PowerPoints with all this information in it, right, and the students are able to follow within the book with the PowerPoints as well, right, well, <laughs> the instructor says, well, we don't need you on Wednesday, and I said, what? He says, yeah, we're doing review. So I've only created content in my PowerPoints for <laughs> the book. But in barbering, especially our barber textbook, we have that little exam review book. So <clears throat> I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> I don't have any review. So needless to say, for the last two weeks, I have created another 21 PowerPoints just for the exam review. And what I did was each, each one has different amounts of questions. So in the exam review, the largest one, which is that one right there, the infection control principles and practices, that's a review uh, video there. And <clears throat> when I tell you that that had 87 Every questions, in, it had 87 questions in that. And I went through and I typed out all of that. When I tell you I did it, I did it. When I when I was so high from education that day, 
I had to go for a walk. I was like, I did it. I did it. 87 questions. And I was working on that on July 4th on the holiday. Mm -mm. When you got goals and things to do, it don't matter if it's a holiday or not. Let's get this done. So that's what I did. And I was glad to be able to, um, because I think we were we on, on that class there in that video, that was July 5th. So I had gotten all of those questions done for their review and for them to work on that on July 5th. Woo. Okay, now Howard, how can they join um, this online program that you have so they can teach or pass the test? Okay, so <clears throat> now they can go to howardbrownonline.com at howardbrownonline.com and I think it should be in there too but at howardbrownonline.com the students are able to see they're able to see um, the barber boot camp and the barber boot camp like here is howardbrownonline.com howardbrownonline.com there, the students are able to then go there to what's called the Barber Boot Camp. And I know here in Texas, I have the, um, the state board chapters already bundled up in the Barber Boot Camp. And they're able to get access to that and to, um, are you able to pull it up? But they're, they're able to get access to it and then to learn from that content. They're able to continue to view it over and over and then they're able to um, you know, listen to it as well. So I have it so that they're able to watch the content. Then they're also able to, let's say they're driving in their car, they're able to listen to the content as well. And then there, there is some testing in there as well in the end. How can I find you on Instagram? Tell them what's your Instagram. Um, now, <clears throat> my personal Instagram is Mr. Chaz Howard. So that's just my personal. Um, the school doesn't have a, uh, what you call it, uh, Instagram page yet. Now on Facebook, there is, there's Howard Brown online on Facebook. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I mean, no, not Twitter, not Twitter. Uh, what's that called? Uh, TikTok. <laughs> so I've been trying to expand, you know, and I'm trying to create and then expand as well. <clears throat> so Mr. Chaz Howard, Mr. C-H-A-Z Howard, you can find me there. There I am right there. Okay, now, <clears throat> this link right here. Yes. What you want to do, you want to take that link right here and basically go to Bentley. I'm just doing this, something for y'all to see. Y'all see that long link right there? So we're gonna create him a nice link. Uh, so what do you want that link to be? What do you wanna name it? Um. So you could do HBBC for Howard Brown Barber College. So HBBC. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, half link cannot be empty. It's gotta be a little bit longer. Let's try HBBC. Need something longer. Oh, you could do Howard Brown BC. Hmm, back half empty. It's really strange. Let me try one more time. Real strange. Howard. <clears throat> now it could be that it's uh um that link is forwarded. This link right here. Mm -hmm. Where's that link coming from? That original link? Um it's coming from uh what you call it? Uh GoDaddy. From GoDaddy. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, this is what we're going to do. Well, that link right there, we need to put that link um, on the YouTube right here. So when they watch this, they can just click it and it'll go there. Because we want this link to be clickable. Oh, you know what? And it, it should be. You right. know what? And I, you know what? Usually I have it clickable. Okay. And I, and I, did, I didn't do it there. All right. But you're right. You're right. Because I think that if you go to one of the other classes, now, the other classes will have it. They, they need to see how professional this is. Can I play this a little bit? Mm -hmm. And the big test is tomorrow. So we're hitting every section one through five today because we've already pretty much hit one, two, three, and five <clears throat> over and over. I wanted to start with this one here. Because this one we haven't done. This is our biggest one here. Infection control principles and practices. So this is going to be on page. We'll start like on page 57. <clears throat> so if you have your books, you can start on page 57. Now, federal and state agencies regulate the practice of barbering. And state agencies, do they set guidelines for use of equipment? Do they regulate licensing? Do they set guidelines for manufacturing? Or do they monitor safety in the workplace? Do they set guidelines for use of equipment? Do they regulate licensing? Do they set guidelines for manufacturing or do they monitor safety in the workplace? Yeah, it is B. I, I said wholeheartedly. Okay, so somebody said wholeheartedly, she said, that she believes uh -huh. that it's B. Uh -huh. oh, it's C. It's C. Oh, it's it's right here, state agency regulate licensing enforcement in your conduct when you go working in the shop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm See, this is very detailed, and you got your stuff. Look, look, look how professional this looks, y'all. <laughs> he has the colors is bold i mean this is very detailed i mean look at this extremely detailed mm -hmm. so i really wanted y'all to see this and it's not just this video his stuff is very detailed i mean what he's teaching welcome to howard brown look, look at all this book because class is in session look at that <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Howard Brown Online Barber College. I'm your instructor, Charles Howard. As a barber, you must know how to use chemical preparation safely that. and how he, he's talking, giving you visuals because he knows about a visual learner, audio learner, kinesthetic, all of that. So I wanted y'all to see how great this program is, what he's created. And I, w I want to get that link. Hold on, where is that link at? Uh, no, that's not it. Um, Howard Brown online. Yeah, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna get this link because all of y'all need to, uh, y'all need to tell everybody about this. And so it it will the school will actually um, and what I'm doing there in the video is doing a live class. Uh, for one school. And so what I'm looking to do is to partner with some other schools who may need instructors. You know, I, I instruct, I instruct throughout the day. So I have some, some classes that are recorded, which is there at howardbrownonline.com um, that can help the students if they're not in class or they just want to just specifically focus on just the state board chapters, they can do that there. Or, you know, if the uh, school owners would like to participate in a live class, you know, so then that way you can make sure that your students are learning, you know what I mean? So then that way you can just step away from that class and handle some other things, whether it be the practical floor, the office, whatever you would need to do. 
um, you could do that and just know that you have an instructor right there coming in live. And it, it is so cool. I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, the, the laptop is connected to the TV. And it's so funny because when people, the students will come up, they say, Mr. Howard. And they, so they're looking, they're not looking at the laptop. They up here at the TV. Mr. Howard, are you there? Or not? <laughs> and I'm like, so I just go ahead and respond, you know, hey, yes, you know, no. <laughs> so this will help them pass their tests, a barber who's having it difficulties. Will. Yeah, because their barber test and th their test is not, uh, is not easy. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, it's not. And you know what was what's re really interesting to see people who have been, you know, like I, I was doing a, a test for my master educator license or my teaching license, and it took me six tries. And I've seen, you know, students going to take their written exam 10, 11, 12. And it's like, so I, and to me, that's why I wanted to saturate uh, YouTube with my content for barbering. So then that way, if they just decided, you know, let me just see if it's something out there on chapter four or chapter six, whatever the case may be, they could see my information out there. And then if they decided that they wanted to click that link, then they can go through and then get some detail. Because I, some people just want, you know, the, um, just one class per se. So they can just get one class, it's no problem. Or you can just go on ahead and just get the whole package. You know, so it's just, it's up to you, the student, you know, what you not, what you want and what you need. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now, um, so if somebody was looking for you, Howard, just say on YouTube, what is the number one problem that you solve? Uh, the number one problem that I saw yeah. was somebody. What what problem do people have that you have a solution for? It's just teaching. They don't. They don't have anybody. They don't have anybody to, uh, you know, help them teach these classes. So they can't pass the test. <clears throat> so you, you know. They can't pass the test or, you know, like the school owners, for example, are just pulled into so many different directions. And so my school and my service can help them out by allowing them to, you know, to step back, to relax. And you, you have somebody there that's, that's here to help you. So if I was a student in barber school, you could teach me how to pass the test. Yes. So if I was going on YouTube, I have a problem. YouTube is like a Google search. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably go on YouTube and type in how to pass the barber test, mm -hmm. how to pass the barber exam. So now a lot of your videos, you want to title those videos that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So it, it, <coughs> excuse me. It, a lot of it is. Um, a lot of it is, you know, titling and all of that. And, and I, I looked at if, you know, like, like a lot of times I'm, I'm looking at where the book is called Milady Standard Barbering Textbook. So I, I looked at and researched and say, okay, so is it the Milady chapter four, Milady chapter six? And <clears throat> when I do that and I have programs, <laughs> brother, when I tell you, I got a computer system. And that system there lets me know keywords and, and all of that. So I have been uh, researching a lot of it. The stuff that's in my titles and stuff are somewhat catchy and all of that. And then I have my, my videos and stuff tagged and, and they're tagged in other people's videos as well. Okay. So that way um, everybody is able to do it. Now, can schools join your online program so they can get <clears throat> access to this material? How much is that per month? Okay, so now here's here's the thing. It's for the state board chapters. It's ninety nine dollars per month. month. Yes. Okay, and then they have unlimited <laughs> access to this. It's ninety five, ninety five to ninety, ninety five to ninety nine dollars a month uh, okay. for for the uh, state board, the barber boot camp, and that's one of the things that I advertise in the back of the uh, in the so back of the videos. 
you're teaching, they're going to eventually be able to learn to hold my latest book. Right. Where you're breaking it down, teaching that and everything. <clears throat> so now the school can go online and really Howard Brown, that video online program will be teaching it because from looking at you teach and the way that you break everything down, there's not many instructors at your level. No. Uh -uh. You, and, you, know, and, you know what? And, and one of my, <clears throat> one of the things that I looked at was Milady has, Milady has their own um, video series and all of that as well. Yeah, but it's not like yours. I, I've but it's not like mine. Yeah, because yeah. it's just black and white. And like somebody right. on YouTube, like in my research, someone on YouTube has the black and white, you know, and you can learn from it, but with mine, I have pictures. I have when really? I'm teaching the live classes, um, I have the so in my live classes, I have videos incorporated in there as well. So we're able to, like, for example, uh, we were learning uh, chemical texture services today. So we we're on a perm rod section. So I'm able to share a video in there as well. And one of the things that I think is so cool is that they're looking at this on a screen. So they're seeing like how you and I are right now. They're seeing that. And then a video pops up. So they're right. able to see the book, well, just like what we just did, you know. <clears throat> and so I'm able to share the videos and stuff as well so that I'm engaging. Because one of my things is I want to make sure that if you have dyslexia, you know, if you have problems reading, whatever the case may be, that you're able to still learn from my content. Right. <clears throat> So, Those are better than my ladies. I mean, I've looked at my ladies. I mean, I've been licensed 32 years and mm -hmm. I've looked at their stuff. That's why I was so impressed when I saw yours. And I mean, you all can look at it and y'all can see if, if y'all go through it. So definitely, if you have a school, you definitely want this program. I don't care if you have good instructors or whatever, because you need to have your, your past fail rate that that needs to be passing every beauty school barber whatever they need this program yep i would definitely go on the NACA's website there's 1165 accredited schools every school owner they need that all 1165 need this program right here so mm -hmm. that would be literally a thousand people paying a hundred dollars a month that's one hundred thousand a month Mm -hmm. you're looking at so all of them need to have the exposure of that whether yeah. they get a month free to just get them in and lure them in because once they experience this and the students experience it they're going to want it so mm -hmm. yeah yep. I, um, I one of one of my th and again you know I, I want to you know help like especially these new uh, school owners you know I, I think that a lot of times Again, they they're being pulled in so many different directions and stuff. And if I can help them, you know, by teaching the live class, you know, I, I get out there at eight thirty in the morning, ten thirty in the morning, and then let's get your students educated. You know what I mean? So then that way you don't have to worry about that. Them having access to the recorder in the back office, twenty four seven. Right, and then they would they would have, able they'd have that as well. Yeah, this so you is, can have the live classes or you can have those that are recorded. Because this is next level. Um, so I just put his link up there again. Y'all definitely want to click that link. Is there any kind of other way that they can contact you, uh, Charles? If, if, if they want to contact me, I can provide my phone number as well. What's that number? It's 214-277-4058. And I'm Charles Howard. <laughs> And I'm putting this on YouTube and I'm definitely going to put your link in there. Awesome. I and I'll be referring it. people to you. I mean, I always tell people about you, but awesome. I definitely, I want you to come on here to share with them so they could see what you have and what you're doing, because this awesome. is really a need. Um, <clears throat> now I know Lisa, she trains instructors. She has a good program too. So y'all definitely need to probably connect. Do y'all have any questions? 